planning as a concept. What can easily come to mind is what is planning? Defining planning. Planning involves identifying and defining missions and objectives and a way of achieving them. It requires decision, that is, choosing from a more alternative future course of action. Planning bridges the gap from where we are to where we want to be. It makes it possible for things to occur which would not otherwise happen. Then, looking at planning deeply, planning determining future course of action to achieve the objective with optimal utilization that are available within the available resources. Now, what are the patterns of planning? Why do we plan? Why do you have to spend your resources, your time to plan for the future? Why do you need to look into the future and consider what you have at the present? One is minimize risk and uncertainty. When you have a plan, it will help you to minimize the risk you would have run into in the future. For example, if you want to plan for the number of schools that was likely to be in year 2020, you need to look into the future to know what is likely to be after that time in the area of policies, in the area of change in the social behavior, in the area of technology, all these have to be pulled together. And at the same time, you need to consider the GDP and the GNP of the nation. What will it be within that period? If not, you may not be able to achieve a good plan. Now, it, helps, it leads to success. When you have a good plan, it will help you achieve what you need to achieve. It helps in the face of increasing competition. When you have a good plan, it will help you overcome some competitions, especially in the, um, in the educational sector today. We have a lot of competition here and there. You have private school coming up within the private school that are competition trying to meet up with what is required that will provide quality education and making education accessible to those that are demanding it. So in this area where you have a good plan, you'll be able to have an edge. And at the same time, even within the nations, there could be competitions. France are today, you find so many people from Nigeria traveling out to gain education in other neighboring countries. But however, one need to ask, why are they traveling? So when you look into the future and find out why they are doing that, it will help you to compete with other uh, sectors that are doing the same thing with you. Now, the next one we can easily look into, the fourth point, it facilitates control. When you have a good plan, you will be able to monitor the implementation and at the same time have a control on the implementation process. When there is no plan, you may not necessarily be able to monitor the project that is in place. Fifth point is that it provides for complex technological changes. When you like example I gave earlier on, if you are going to plan for education in year 2020 or you want to plan for an education in 2030, definitely remember there is going to be changes in the technology. Like if we look back years before now, we are not the children in the primary school section do not use paper to write, especially in primary one, they use what we call slates and they pick a chalk to write on it. But over time, technology changes. And today, students are even being taught with tablets in the classroom. So if you have a good plan, it will help you to plan the technology that will be required in that process. It helps in focusing on your goals. For every organization, there is a goal. For every educational sector, there is a goal. So if you have a good plan, you will be able to meet up with the goal that is required. Now, let us look at the characteristics of a good plan. Looking at the characteristics of the good plan, first, it is based on a clearly defined unambiguous object objective. A plan cannot uh, commence when there is no objective, say, when there is no goal. The goal needs to be well spelled out. The objective needs to be well spelled out, and it must not be ambiguous. Secondly, it should be simple. It should not be complicated. When the uh, objective is complicated 
or maybe the plan is so complicated you find it difficult to achieve so when you are making your plan ensure that the plan you are making is simple it's achievable it's not the one that cannot be achieved then thirdly it should be def it should define clear action and ways of achieving them not just bringing up a plan when you come up with a plan and the plan are in stages for each stage as you measure the plan you need to spread out the action that will be taken and how you intend to achieve that action that is when the plan will be meaningful for example let us cast our mind back to the 6334 system we had in Nigeria some time ago. Today people talk about it. Oh, that system failed. That system would have been good. Now there was a problem in the plan because at the process of planning, there were no clear cuts on what should be done to achieve in each stage. And as we all knew then for people that follow through, you discover that the, the our program have already commenced before they realized that the people that are to teach in those programs were not available. So that wasn't a good plan. Though the program would have been a good one, but the plan was faulty. Now let's look at the next one. It should be flexible to accommodate changes. It should be flexible to accommodate changes. You should not plan in such a way that, oh, you cannot change so rigid. No, because even when you plan, there are th things you may not have taken notice of in your plan that may be unfolding as the implementation is going on. And when such things come in, you know that it's going to hinder the implementation process. There should be an opening that you will be able to integrate what you need to integrate alongside with the implementation. Again, going back with that uh, example I gave a while ago, that was what happened because when you are giving that gap, you are making it flexible. It shouldn't be for such things that you know it's going to take a longer time to fit in. Now, let us look at, think of the next one. It should make best utilization of available resources. It should make use of the available resources. Look around your environment. Pick the resources that are there and make good use of them. And it will help your plan to succeed. It should lead the organization towards success. A plan that do not lead this organization towards success is not a good plan. And that is the same thing with me, I mentioned concerning the 6334. It wasn't a good plan and it affected the nation altogether. Now let us see what happened, the advantages of a plan. We have looked at the, the importance of the plan. The importance here actually emphasizes the why. The important is why the plan. Why do you need to plan? But here, what are the benefits if you plan? That is what the advantages here is now referring to. Now, planning helps the manager to visualize future challenges and opportunities and which help the organization to be proactive to face future authenticity. Secondly, it helps to make all activities purposeful by eliminating or avoiding those activities which do not contribute to achievement of objectives. It helps the manager to analyze all the variables affecting the performance. Again, it encourages achievement of action. It serves as an instrument of control. It helps to st streamline the focus. It helps to achieve the maximum utilization of available resources. Apart from having the advantages, there are limitations. You may want to have a good plan, but you are limited with some certain things. What are these limitations? First of the limitation is that plan is dependent on correctness of information, available data. If the data available are not correct, then you will not be able to plan well. It will affect the plan. Secondly, uncertainty. An element of uncertainty always exists in planning. As a forecast control, be 100% accurate and reliable. Rigidity. Planning limits flexibility and this may affect results. If it is too rigid, it will affect the result that ought to be. Planning involves a lot of resources which may be limited. While planning, there might be a need for some resources and if those resources are not there, definitely it will affect the plan that has been put in place. Planning inhibits human creativity. Well, this is what is being said. But uh, to me, because a lot of um, authors feel planning inhibits human creativity. I, for one, do not really support that. Rather, 
planning will increase your creativity. For a planning to succeed, you must be creative. If you are not creative, plan cannot succeed. So you have to be more creative. It's your creativity that will help you have a good forecast into the future. It's your creativity that will enable you to determine and identify the available resources that you need to put in place. It is your creativity that will help you to know how you're going to share these resources. But when your creativity is low, then the plan is set to fail.